The thing I wanted to start out with was two events that I experienced in the last week, which fascinated me, right? Two, two comments that I made and the reactions that I got in response to them. One was a reiteration of one of the positions that I adopted during the presidential campaign, which is that I personally believe, and you can disagree with this, it's fair, a lot of, a lot of people do, but it's my view that it's perfectly reasonable for every high school senior to have to pass the same civics test and to take the same oath of loyalty to the United States of America as every legal immigrant to this country does before they become a voting citizen. To say that for the same reasons that we require a legal immigrant to this country to pass the civics test and to be able to swear an oath of allegiance to the country, we shouldn't expect any less of our own citizens. And let's start with a clean, fresh slate with high school graduates in the next generation. And I bring that up not to talk about the policy merits of that, though you're free to comment on it, but I bring it up because a guy by the name of Matt Iglesias, you know, posts, you probably know him, posts on social media saying that, wait, wait, wait a minute, wouldn't this actually advantage Democrats given the realignments that we're seeing in both parties? To which my response is, I, I don't particularly care which party it advantages. I think it's going to advantage the United States of America and our civic identity. So that happened a few days ago. Then just in more recent days, I think it was just yesterday, right? Julian Assange reaches a pardon deal and he is a, not a pardon deal, but a, but a plea deal to be able to go free. He's ultimately going to be free and able to even potentially travel in the United States by pleading guilty to some charges. And I shared my view that I think he deserves a full pardon because he was held to a different standard than many members of the press. It just happens to be an independent view that I have on the merits of the matter. You could disagree or agree. And again, the, 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 in this case, another member of the media, actually, I think in this case was this uh, David Weigel, your, your colleague, if I'm not mistaken, Semaphore, posted that, but isn't it Donald Trump and Bill Barr's DOJ that actually indicted him? And I think that there's a consistent pattern across those two incidents, which leaves me deeply concerned that it's impossible to adopt policy positions or have a principled policy debate on the merits in this country if your policy positions are imprisoned by being a projection of what your partisan affiliation was deemed to be. I think it becomes impossible to have a foreign policy. I think it becomes impossible for the United States to have a domestic policy if every policy discussion becomes a projection of what the partisan prediction of somebody's position was supposed to be. And that worries me deeply as it relates to this theme of national unity. And if for somebody who sits in the seat of the vantage point of the media that you do, I just thought it would be an interesting place to open up our conversation and hear your reaction to that. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there's so much in, in what you just said. And, and, and I think in some sense, I think you yourself obviously feel these polls. I mean, the you um, everything you said, I think about people wanting to feel American and to feel united across party. Like, like just I think you that's those are ninety percent of people would probably agree, and and to and to want institutions that are not polarized and that are not partisan. Although I would I would say the history of the United States of of the media and of other institutions often is of this deep polarization, but um. But I mean, but I guess I I feel like watching you. I see I see both sides of this. I mean, you you tried to start a kind of politicized investment vehicle, which is a non, a non political space because there's a big opportunity there and a lot of demand. I think for politics and 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 so I guess I'm curious, and maybe this is to sort of put aside for a moment. But I am curious how you navigate these two different poles, which you must feel when you run for office. You obviously feel them, and when you when you and when you go on Twitter, you also inevitably yeah. find somebody who will troll you and disagree with you and, and take a very partisan view of what are not necessarily partisan issues. I mean, on the, on the specific Assange issue, I totally agree with you that it was a, it was an incredibly um, dangerous prosecution for, for the media, because a lot of, because when you sort of write it charge by charge, a lot of what Assange was doing looks a lot like journalism. And I think it wasn't, whatever the good reason they may have had to charge him kind of wasn't worth the threat to journalism. I do think more broadly in the way that it's it, the way this bleeds into and kind of melts reporters' brains is that there's a sense of um, that, that you want to evaluate facts or claims or um, or you know or things happening in the world through a lens that is who will this help in a partisan way yeah. or or do I trust this person because they have a partisan agenda yeah. and it and and you know often people who are have insane partisan agendas that you think are totally nuts are right on the facts and people who you think are great people and for all the right reasons and in good faith, which is this elusive thing people on the internet like to talk about who's in good faith and who's in bad faith, sometimes they're wrong. And I think it's 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 really hard but important as reporters to kind of suspend your 
judgments of the source in in favor of trying to figure out what's actually going on? 